There's no logical connection to, I like interacting with people and figuring stuff out. Oh, I think I want to be a doctor. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I am excellent. What can I help you with? I have a the age-old question of getting your feedback on where you think I'm at as an applicant. Um, I So I was planning on applying this cycle, and I'm still planning on doing that. Um, I So I graduated with a, in 2020 with a 3.5 overall GPA and a 3.2 science GPA. Okay. And I was, I took the MCAT in April and got it scored in April. And so I was ready to apply for May, get, have my application done by May and apply June. Okay. So I got my MCAT back and it was a 506. Okay. And I had a 124 in car and not cars and psych soch. And that brought my score down. I, I was expecting like a 510. Um, and so usually I was scoring like around a 128 in that section. Um, so I re- just studied and retook it Saturday, this past Saturday. Okay. And now I have to wait till July for July 26 for my score to come back. Okay. And I was planning on submitting my primary by the 4th of July and sort of just waiting for my, to just to one school and waiting yep. for my MCAT to come back. Um, so I wanted your feedback on that plan. If I get, if I do get a 510 or something, I'm planning on moving forward, but I just kind of wanted your sense of if you think I'm competitive as an applicant overall, and I can sort of go into my overall package, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so that's the main question. Yeah. I, I mean, a 510 is a really good score. A 506 is an okay score. So if you get that 510, that will definitely help. A higher MCAT score always helps. 3.5 with a 3.2 science is less sexy. Um, what is What does the trends look like there? The trend was um, failing a math course my first quarter. And so that put my GPA at like a negative, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then overall, I... So I had a more of a humanities background that I transitioned into bio and I ended up taking a fifth year to complete the degree. Um, and my last year was all A's and I got, it was an upward trend. I didn't do too hot in physics um, and I didn't do too hot in like biochemistry, mm. but I ended up ended with A's and like advanced courses at the okay. end of my, my last year. Um, and then and how many credits that, was that last year? It was hacked like it was um 20 credits per quarter and okay. so it was like i mean i was doing a full course load for the whole year so um, okay so 60 credits but that's quarter system so like roughly 40 credits so it's like two-thirds I, right semester I, semester credits i think so i mean it brought my gpa up like a point by the end of that year so it was a point 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 so it was yeah. by the end of the year yeah and so um, that's how it ended. Okay. So it sounds like you have a decent upward trend and a, a 510 is definitely a, a really good well, I don't have MCAT score. Yeah. Let's, let's assume, let's, uh, think positively. Um, yeah. okay. So let's assume we get that 510. What else? What, obviously stats are just one part of the application. What does yeah. the rest look like? My main concern was just automatically being rejected because of the 124 or else I would have applied. Nope. Um, not okay. an issue. I did want to just retake because I just knew that I could do better on that section. Yeah. Um, but I, so I retook it and I delayed applications entirely. Uh, but other than that, I have research experience and I have, um, I'm currently a scribe and I've been a scribe for the past year. So I have about a thousand hours of scribing. Um, Great. And I have um, a, a couple clinical experience pre COVID that were long term. Um, and then I had to move out of college. So I haven't. The next thing after COVID was scribing. Yep. Um, but before that, I had a hundred hours in an ER volunteer and also hospice volunteering. Great. And also had um, research experience up until that point, about three years in the lab. And then I had a, a couple projects there, and then one publication in my undergrad journal. Okay. Um, and I was a learning assistant my last year and a TA um, before that, or a peer tutor, and so. That was all pre-COVID during college. And then other than that, I mean, I have my, I had my letters of rec ready to go. I had a couple from my professors. I didn't get one from a doctor. Um, 
and I still don't have one from a doctor. But other than that, I mean, yeah. Why, why not one from a doctor? Uh, so I shadowed a physician for a few months up until actually COVID started. Mm -hmm. um, and then I sort of just, you're a scribe. Aren't you around doctors all the time? I am. I have a doc. I mean, I do, but I haven't asked anyone for a letter yet. Cause I have like five or six letters already. So I just wasn't yeah. sure if I need one. Um, yeah, the, the doctor letters are weird, right? Because not every school requires one. But I've seen some weird feedback from students that are told by the school, like, you don't have a doctor letter. How come? Like, well, you don't require one. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Why are you asking me that? It's yeah. it's this weird, like, purgatory of, of like, uh, what, 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 do you, what do you call that? Um, uh, you damned if you don't. Well, yeah, I don't know, but the, there's like this the the hidden curriculum is what I was thinking of. Like, there's these hidden requirements. Like, if you want a doctor letter, tell me you want a doctor letter, and I'll get you one. If you don't want one, and you're okay if I don't have one, then that. So, uh, anyway, I know DO schools are more explicit. Like, they require one, and I was considering applying to DO schools. Yep. Um, but I don't have a DO letter. I wouldn't be able to get a DO letter. You, you don't need a DO letter. There's there's only one school that requires a DO letter. There are about 20 schools that require a letter, MD or DO. Um, and some will re um, recommend a DO letter, but very explicitly, I've, I've talked to the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine, and they tell me, like, tell students, you don't need to shadow a DO, you don't need a DO letter to apply to DO schools. That's not uh, that big of a deal at all. So, I mean, overall, what do you think? Like, should I apply this cycle, waiting for my MCAT kind of late? I don't know if that's late in July, but... Um, no, I, I think it's fine. Get your application in as soon as you can. Assuming everything looks good, you've you've been working on your personal statement, secondaries, et cetera, or not secondaries, personal statement activities, all of that. And then secondaries are going to come pretty quick. So you, you need to be prepared um, for obviously the one school that you add to your, your list, but then pre-writing the other ones as if you're going to apply to all the other schools that you're going to apply to. So in terms of my like, personal statement um i kind of wanted your feedback on how you think i should because the my, my like seed is more of a intellectual one and i'm having a hard mm -hmm. time for mm -hmm. that. yeah i i'm not a fan of intellectual seeds it's more of a, it's like a intellectual seed that was then watered by uh clinical experience yep and so i'm trying to sort of get that balance of but but first, it did start with this sort of like intellectual curiosity, and that's what drove me to it. Um, and so I'm not really sure if you have any advice on how to package that. You just tell your story best you can. Uh, it's it's your story. It's your truth. Uh, I, and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm not a fan of intellectual seeds, because to okay. me, there there's not a logical connection to I really like science, therefore I want to be a doctor. Right. Well, it wasn't science. It was the humanities. And so it was like, that's even worse of a story. <laughs> I really like humanities. I want to be a doctor, right? Logically, there's I, no connection there. Yeah. So okay. how, how are you making that connection? I guess when I think about it, it wasn't just intellectual. I mean, it started just being a peer tutor for a humanities course. And it was those interactions that I kind of sitting down one-on-one -on -one with people. I really, I liked being a peer tutor. Therefore I want to be a doctor. No, not the peer tutoring, but the getting into other people's like thoughts and, and working out something together that kind of grew into. I okay, like I working of... out things with other people. I want to be a doctor. I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> but how does that equal doctor? So um, I, I guarantee you and, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll spend this time right now that there's something else that you're not being truthful about that has impacted your journey to medicine. There's no logical connection to, I like interacting with people and figuring stuff out. Oh, I think I want to be a doctor. So okay. let's, let's, uh, let's, let's go into young, young mind of yours. Um, uh, tell me about your childhood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, I did sort of write this in my personal statement already. I really fell in love with, I was sort of, uh, kind of older when my mom got pregnant and so i was aware of the pregnancy 
and uh, I was really interested in like the whole process of life mm. being created. That sounds more related to medicine than I like talking with people. And so she was yeah. also older. So it was a challenging pregnancy and there was a lot of stuff that I was learning about uh, as we were going through that. Mm. Um, and I just remember being obsessed with like her pregnancy books and learning about all like the, the whole process. So, I, really so liked. I don't, I don't understand why you're stuck on this intellectual learning assistant working with students side then. I mean, that's, that's not, I mean, that was part of it, but that's not like the whole, uh, but it is, I, I, I thought it would be important to talk about like why I would even go down that route. But, but okay, let's let fl flush out that thought because it still makes zero sense to me why you think that's important. Unless, me, unless, really unless, hold on, hold on, unless, which is very common, unless yeah. what you're trying to do is I like talking to people and figuring stuff out with them, and I know that being a doctor is talking to people and figuring things out with them, therefore, look at me, I've done it before, I really liked it, therefore, I want to be a doctor, and I'm already good at it. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't really sure that that's what being a doctor was, so I didn't really do put that together. Um... But yes, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Big big mistake in my mind. Okay. Yeah, well, and it's very common, right? Very very common for students to um, to take angles on things to go. I understand that being a doctor is working one on one with someone, figuring out what's going on, helping them through these things, and I'm going to show you. Mr. or Mrs. Reader, whoever you are, that I have already done that type of thing so that you can be sure that I know what I'm getting myself into, that I like that kind of interaction, and I, I'm probably good at it because I did it for a while. You're taking the angle through that lens, and this is why I, I outwardly reject it and why I was like, that doesn't, it's, does, it's not logical, right? I, I'm super very basic. Is it logical? Is it not logical in terms of why you want to be a doctor? It's right. super logical if what you're trying to do is sell that you're ready to be a doctor, right? That's what you're trying to do. I know what it's like to be a doctor and I'm going to show you what I've done that has prepared me to be a doctor. That's what you're doing. And it's a very common tact that students take that potentially would work. Maybe someone reading it goes, oh, great. I was, I was really wanted to make sure that, that you, you're, you like this type of interaction. Yeah. My recommendation based on the, the, the reasons that I recommend it is, is in terms of the personal statement being a document about why you want to be a doctor. Not that you're ready to be a doctor. Not that you think you're going to be a good one. Not that you're dedicated to it. None of that. Why do you want to be a doctor? Take a look at your personal statement. See, based on that, you reread it and go, oh yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to do. And see, if you if you disagree with me, great, submit what you got. If you're like, oh, that, that makes sense, then massage it some. It's up to you, it's your, it's your essay. Right, okay, I, that makes sense. I mean, I wasn't, I don't think I ever claimed to do it like, oh, I know what it's, I never really say like, this is what being a doctor is like, so yeah. in my statement, um, but if it comes off that way, I definitely don't want to do that. So I'll see. Yeah, take a look at it. I mean, other than that, I mean, do you think that there's a, if I do get my score back in July, should I wait till next cycle to be early to next cycle? Or is that still considered? No, I think, to... yeah, I, my general recommendation is June 30th is typically the latest that I would recommend an MCAT. An MCAT, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you obviously took it before June thirtieth because we're we're talking before that date, and you've already taken the MCAT. So I think I think you're fine. Uh, apply, get your application in earlier. I, I would have liked your application to be in already, but that's that's okay. Submit it as soon as you can, um, as soon as you're ready. Don't don't rush just to rush. Um, and uh, I I don't think there's any harm as, as we're recording this at the end of June. I don't think there's any harm in submitting it in the next week or so and uh, and and getting your MCAT score back kind of three quarters through July and still being okay. I, I think the whole apply early recommendation gets gets a little kind of bastardized of like, oh, you have to apply within the first week or you should just give up, All right? So I think you're okay. Because my GPA is on the low end, I kind of just want to like, 
present at the best time. Uh, so I, I've had conversations. Um, one, one of my friends who I actually met in person, finally, Dr. Uh, Rafael Rivera, who's the uh, associate dean of, of admissions at NYU, we've had this conversation about applying early, and he doesn't recommend students with lower stats apply early. He's like, because the people who are applying early are the gunners who are going to have high stats. And why do you want to be mixed up with all of their applications? So pump your brakes a little bit and then apply a little bit later. So that that's his recommendation. I don't know if I fully agree with it, but I think I think it's a valid one as well. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Hopefully that MCAT score comes back super strong and you're off to the races. So worst case, what if it's the same score? Do I just... Yeah. So, <laughs> so then, yeah. So, th so then you're kind of stuck because you've committed yourself to retaking the MCAT, and if yeah. it's the same score, that sends or, a bad signal to schools, right? Or worse, right? Of like, you you retook it, you got the same score. Why mm -hmm. did did you right. did you not learn from your first quote unquote mistake? Even though five oh six, I wouldn't say is a mistake. It's just not super stellar. Um, and so you didn't learn from that. You didn't improve why, what's going on. And so that potentially comes with some more discussion on apply, not apply and, and everything else. But if, if you got the same score or worse, I would potentially go, uh Oh, I need to take it a third time and, and actually do better this time. And in terms of my GPA, do you think a master's program would have been like necessary for me? It it depends without without seeing all of your grades laid out. Uh, it it sounds like if you had a full year of basically a four point that's pretty awesome. And for yeah. a lot of schools, that'll be just fine, showing them that you, you're academically capable. So if you if you looked in your last forty credit hours, fifty credit hours, semester hours, so you'd have to convert uh, your quarters to semesters, and your last forty or fifty credit semester credit hours is like three seven, three eight, three nine, you're probably fine. You basically okay. did what a post back or a master's would uh, would do. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Graham. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Keep us posted.